In the first part of this video series, we talked about the main attractions and hidden gems along Interstate 70, the road that stretches from Fort Cove, Utah to Baltimore, Maryland. A year ago, we went over the rugged Utah and Colorado portion of the interstate, but today we'll be going over some of the most notable stops along the Kansas and Missouri portion of I-70. So let's get into it. Just about two hours east of the Colorado-Kansas border is the small town of Hayes. If you're wanting to spend a night here, Hayes has plenty of options for consistent brand name hotels and chain restaurants. But on top of that, it's got a wildly charming downtown with local breweries, restaurants, and coffee shops reminiscent of a scene from the old Wild West. It's a small downtown, but very well has its historical roots preserved. Hayes and its notorious former residents are thought to have given rise to the myth of the American Old West, with such names as Calamity Jane, Buffalo Bill Cody, and Wild Bill Hickok once calling Hayes, Kansas home. Overall, it's a fun quick stop for some local grub and a history lesson on this I-70 road trip. Just under 100 miles east is our next stop, Salina, Kansas, or Salina, I'm not too sure. Home to the 10th largest population base in the state with 46,000 people. Greater Salina offers the usual chain restaurants and fast food fit for an I-70 road trip. But Salina's main street, Santa Fe Ave, is where the city truly shines. Salina's quaint downtown has enough offerings for any craving. Jamaican, Italian, and Mexican, all within the downtown corridor. Pretty diverse offerings for a town in the middle of Kansas. And a large park walking distance from the city center, home to the Statue of Liberty. Well, a mini one anyways, built in 1950. If you do nothing else in Salina, be sure to make a pit stop at the Garage Automotive Museum, home to a state-of-the-art gallery showcasing dozens of cars, old, new, and sporty. Abilene, Kansas is our next stop, about 30 miles east of Salina. Abilene is by far the smallest town on this stretch of the road trip, with a population of just over 6,000 people. It's home to the Dwight D. Eisenhower Presidential Library, Museum, and Childhood Home. While admission to the museum is $20 for adults, the complex is open daily and is home to walking trails, parks, and even the gravesite of the father of the U.S. interstate system himself. I'm sure he'd be proud to see how much it's grown since his signing of the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, and how much it helped connect and unite the country. Now, do I wish someone would sign a hypothetical Federal Aid High Speed Rail Act of 2023? Sure. But there's no denying how integral these cross-country interstates are when it comes to everything from moving product quickly to moving people efficiently over thousands of miles. Small towns like Abilene might have very well become ghost towns by now if it weren't for the interstate system connecting places like it with the rest of the country. Would Abilene even be granted a stop on high-speed rail? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This next stop might be cheating a little, but it can't not be included. 43 miles east of Abilene is Manhattan, Kansas. Okay, it doesn't look like that Manhattan, even though it is named after it. It looks like this, and it's only nine miles off the beaten path of I-70, along Kansas Highway 18. This lively college town is a super fun stop on I-70. Their downtown, also called Aggieville, is filled with college town bars, pubs, and a few nightlife venues. If Kansas State is playing, Aggieville is the place to be, if you aren't at the actual game, that is. Tons of hotels if you need a place to stay, but the main attraction here is definitely the university. Kansas State has no business being this nice. It makes for a great place to walk around and just hang out if you have the time. On your way back to the main interstate, make sure to check out Pillsbury Falls and Historic Deep Creek Schoolhouse. There are a few hidden gems that the locals recommend seeing anytime you're visiting. Our second to last stop in Kansas is Topeka, about an hour east. You've heard of this one. Topeka is the capital of Kansas, so why not take a tour of maybe the coolest looking capital building in the US, with plenty of history attached to it as well. Topeka has a lot of attractions for a city its size. Lake Shawnee is popular in the summer months for outdoor water activities, but if you're looking for something quirkier, definitely stop off at the Evil Knievel Museum, which apparently is a thing. And although I think it's a bit overdone at this point, Yes, Topeka has its own Stonehenge art exhibit. Topeka's biggest attraction is Gage Park, which houses its Children's Discovery Center, the Topeka Zoo, Rose Gardens, and their amphitheater. Our last stop in Kansas is my favorite. It's the city of Lawrence. Lawrence, like Manhattan, is a college town, home to the University of Kansas, the biggest college in the state, and the downtown is what tells the story here. Lawrence is the quintessential college town. College sports are a big part of the culture here, and everyone is repping the Jayhawks. Whether it's game day or not, the downtown is always bustling, usually with students walking from the campus nearby. One of my favorite things about college towns is their walkability. Walking around campus, downtown, the various parks, all are possible in and around the college area. Massachusetts Street is filled with shops, bars, restaurants, performance venues, and much, much more. Just make sure you're not wearing purple. 
or yellow while you're out exploring. If your road trip allows for it, take advantage of watching a Kansas football or basketball game to experience some of the best college sports in the nation right here in eastern Kansas. Our first stop in Missouri is, of course, Kansas City. As you could probably guess, there's a lot to cover in Kansas City, enough for an entire video on its own, being that it's the home to the Kansas City Chiefs of the NFL, the Royals of the MLB, and the Sporting Kansas City of the MLS, along with world-class shopping, dining, and amenities. Out of all the cities in this video, this is the most populous, with around half a million people as of 2021 and growing. This is a road trip video, so you may only have a night or two to spend in the city, so let me fill you in on a few of my favorite things to see. Old Westport is a great neighborhood to spend the night, with plenty of accommodations as well as some of the best breakfast food in town. My favorite spot here is First Watch, which is a smaller chain restaurant, but if you're looking for a local option, Westport Cafe and the Denver Biscuit Company come highly recommended. Old Westport lies at the cross street of Westport Road and Pennsylvania Avenue, where the Santa Fe, Oregon, and California trails once crossed. So there's a lot of history to be found here too. And many of the buildings in the neighborhood date back to the mid 1800s and are retrofitted for adaptive reuse. The bar and nightlife scene here is surprisingly big, so if a night out is what you're looking for on your I-70 road trip, you should have no trouble finding it in Kansas City. Country Club Plaza is where you'll find fast casual shopping and dining destinations, such as Shake Shack, True Food Kitchen, but there are also a ton of KC born and raised options to pick through as well. Another area to note is Leewood, Kansas, right across the border, home to the headquarters of AMC Theaters and some more great shopping, dining, and walking, as well as Independence, Missouri, which is directly on I-70 and home to the Harry Truman Presidential Library and historic downtown. Make that two presidential libraries so far on this stretch. And make sure to check out Blue Springs for some great nature walks mere feet from I-70. Between Kansas City and our next city, there's really not much to do or see. It's a wide two-hour stretch of farmland and small, small farm towns. But our next stop is no small town. With 126,000 people smack dab in the middle of the state, it's Columbia, Missouri, home to the University of Missouri, and another incredible college town atmosphere. The university and downtown are almost one and the same, bleeding into each other, which makes for a great game day atmosphere. The town is full of gorgeous parks, some even featuring lakes and waterfalls and even an art and archaeology museum on campus. When you take into account the amenities, culture, and atmosphere, there's no wonder why Sports Illustrated ranked Columbia in the top five college towns in America in 2019. Founded all the way back in 1839, Mizzou has some of the most beautiful buildings of any college campus in the nation. Definitely make sure Columbia is one of your stops on your Interstate 70 journey, if you have the time. Our last stop in Missouri is the city of St. Louis. 125 miles to the east of Columbia and situated on the Missouri-Illinois border, there's just so much to cover in the city. Let me know out in the comments if you'd like to see a video covering some of these bigger cities on the interstates more in depth like I did in my video about Charleston, South Carolina. St. Louis is home to some great sports teams in the St. Louis Blues, St. Louis Cardinals, and the St. Louis City Soccer Club. So no matter the season, you won't have a problem catching a game if that's your speed. Bush Stadium, home of the Cardinals, is home to maybe the best ballpark location in the country, located in the heart of downtown, with maybe only Petco Park in San Diego, California, rivaling it. As far as neighborhoods worth checking out, the central west end of the northeast corner of Forest Park has some nice shopping and dining, as well as being home to some of the most unique architecture the city has to offer. Forest Park is a sprawling park with many waterways and recreational areas, great if you're looking for something more on the scenic side. But again, there's just so much to do and see in St. Louis. If the weather is nice enough, definitely spend some time on the riverfront. You can take advantage of breathtaking views of the Mississippi River, with the Eads Bridge and the William L. Clay Senior Bridge on either side of you and the Gateway Arch leading right into downtown. St. Louis truly is the gateway to the West, and you can feel it here. But next time, we're continuing our travels eastbound into the states of Illinois and Indiana. Let me know down in the comments section which interstates you'd like to see covered in future series. Leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads, including part three. Until next time, from town, city, state.